No matter where I go, there always seems to be one place that keeps pulling me back. The Alps is the pinnacle of mountain biking, and Mont Blanc is the pinnacle of the Alps. I am Ben Jones, uh, Sales Marketing Director at DV8 Cycles. Myself and Chris Deverson, uh, co-owners of DV8 Cycles, uh, actually met each other guiding here in the Alps. It's somewhere I've spent a lot of time, um, and I think because, because both me and Chris have such a connection to the Alps, I think it's become a big part of deviate. Well, the first guided trip that I put together was something called the Mont Blanc Enduro, um, and it was based on the concept of the Tour de Mont Blanc, the TMB, and it was a it's actually a six-day circumnavigation of Mont Blanc. It went a little bit further out uh, and took in some of the best enduro trails. It's fair to say that that area circling Mont Blanc was is is pretty special to us. Uh, pretty special to me, but also an area that I know really well. Myself and Matthew Fairbrother were discussing ideas for for a challenge. Um, it was obvious that the Alps and specifically the Mont Blanc Massif and circumnavigating that in some way was going to be something that kind of uh, that I thought of. A really cool thing happened last year. Um, a Spanish ultra uh, trail runner. Uh, called Kilian Journey set like a, quite frankly like incomprehensible time around Mont Blanc or around this UTMB route of uh, sub 20 hours. I was 19 hours and 49 minutes and when that happened I the question I asked myself is is it possible to beat that time on a bike and I, I don't know the answer to that question but I've asked Matthew to find out. What is that? Uh, this is coke. <laughs> Looks like tar. How are you feeling Matt? Oh, I don't know I'm not feeling the best but even if I was feeling good, I'll be tired in a few hours anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, sweet. We good to go? Good to go, good luck. Sweet, I'm on. Okay, cool. Catch you guys later. <laughs> Thank you. First, we've got to navigate Chamonix. Got my first climb. Oh, this is steep. Pushed quite hard at the start, just to see where I'd compare against Billion, and then work out what pace I'd need to hold for the circuit. First climb, quite a savage one. At first, it was just a bunch of switch back. It was super steep. I walked about half of them. Oh, That's the top of the climb, going to the Garmin. Oh. Nah, not the top of the climb. You're joking. By the time I got to the top of the first coal, I was behind them, but by the bottom of the descent, I was ahead of them by quite a bit. I just made sure to go quick when it was going down. Oh, I lost too many ways to go. The bovine climb was quite savage. I almost don't mind that because you know you're climbing, but I think what, what was hard was just all the walkers. You're supposed to ride that up. <laughs> uh, too steep. <laughs> so have a good day. <laughs> I was five hours in and 15 minutes ahead of Killian, but I had the biggest climb just ahead of me, one and a half thousand metres up to the Italian border. Leaving Switzerland and heading into Italy, that was yeah, quite a solid section of descending. Although it was quite hard because it's like quite a physical way of descending. It was a good descent and the views in there are just 
like and sign. Yeah, that whole section after that descent was, was quite hard because it was just up and down. And I find that hard to just don't settle into anything. So well, you often end up working a lot harder than you should. I was about 45 minutes ahead of Brilliant at that point in time, so that should quite a bit up. Although I had planned to stop there. I stopped for maybe about 15, 20 minutes, just stocking up on coat basically. Gave away quite a bit of that lead. For everyone, uh, this is Matt. Halfway point. What are we? What's the time? It is ten to nine. Ten to nine. So how many hours is that? Ten hours. Ten hours. So he's aiming for twenty hours. He's at the halfway point, and um, he's just bought eight cokes for fifty euros that he's downed. Now he's uh, continuing up here in the dark. Yeah, the night's gonna be the hard bit. <laughs> but also the, the special bit of it that you remember. <laughs> Going into the first night line, I felt super good. And um, I think almost too good. I like, caught myself pushing harder than I should have been. It's quicker to walk most of this. Just because it's so chunky. It's living pretty. Just on the fourth to last time. Um, at 6k work. 12 hours and 10 minutes in, I think. Something like that. At the moment, I'm hiking up to my third to last summit. And then. Since it's my third to last summit, I only have two more climbs to go after that. So, it's basically around the clock now. Just finished the third to last climb. <laughs> <laughs> Have gone home climb. I was quite confident that I had a good lead on him, and then I was kind of looking at the time climbing up there, and it was like it could go either way up to the, the pole. It's the most technical part, pole loop. Well, I just cleared coal on home. What have you said? Um, never again. That was awful. And then I went into the next descent down in uh, Les Contamine and that descent was just like, it was quite awful. It was just like blown out, lots of loose stones and stuff and I was just getting shaken to bits. Well, I've been quite sick. Um, I think I had some dodgy water. So, yeah, that's good. Managed to get off the bike though. Made it to the last climb. No. Just finished the last climb. I'm feeling demolished. Oh my god, whoopsies. 
That was silly. Sick. I was done. I had completely emptied the tank. And unfortunately, this time, it wasn't meant to be. I believe that it is possible. I just need to come back and show that it is.